Hello and welcome to another LSpec training video. Today's video is going to cover our power quality tab, how to set up compliance reports, and how to analyze and look at your events. So when you click on your power quality tab, um, you select one of your meters that you have in the field. In this case I'm using our uh, G4 that we have up in our Freeport office. And you have two tabs, compliance and events. The compliance tab shows any compliance reports you have set up to generate. These reports are added to this tab via the systems. Select your meter, your power quality tab, and then compliance. Uh, here I'm going to add a 5160 report and then we're going to select recalculate so that way it calculates the data um, and be, be be warned that when you do that depending on which report you select it can take um, a while to do calculations based on, on what the report is and then we're going to click save the time range we're going to save the data go back over to the power quality and you'll notice it's not showing up just yet you have to run um, start the query for your time frame for the new compliance report to show up. Um, so if you're familiar with the start query button, this is one we've looked at in our investigation. You select your time frame and then you query your data. Now as you can see the query has quit running and we've got the IEEE file net team plus the new one here. To generate either one of these reports into a PDF file, you just click the Generate Report. It will create a PDF that you can then save anywhere on your computer. You can also scroll through your report here and look at your data. Selecting a branch up here shows you the individual um, data for that particular parameter. Okay. So now the events is what you would expect to see in a typical power quality monitor. Um, you would go out and you would set your trigger events for certain levels. You'd bring it back and you'd look at your events. Um, we do do that, uh, but the, the great advantage to our continuous waveform recording versus a standard PQ meter is if the data is not here you can go back over to your systems tab go to your events tab sorry and create new events so if the SAG didn't come in correctly, you can go in here and edit it, change your threshold that you're looking for, finish it, and then rerun it, and if there's anything that was missed, it will then show up. So we've got name, so this is what it is. We've got dips, supply voltage, um, rapid transits, you know, basically anything that is over here is going to show up as a event if it occurred during this time frame. So you got your name, your type, your phases that were involved, severity, and this is just a number that the, the programmers put in here to indicate how bad the event may be. Um, I typically don't don't look at this one um, because I like to look at the actual you know values, what what was going on over here. The start and the end time, the duration of the event, the value of the event, where it was generated by, and what component it was on. So generated by, the important thing there is these were generated by the device. So these events were calculated and captured by the device. Um, if it is something that fit these here, then it would say generated by Sapphire. 
or software. Okay. Now, if we had a large amount of events, you can drag and click on name and drag it up here. So now all the dips, all the supply voltage interruptions and voltage drop downs are all sorted easily. So you can go through and look at just specifically what you want to see. Let me drag this back down here when you're done. Um, clicking on it sorts it. Okay. Now, if you go in and you click on the event, it then automatically creates an investigation. It adds it up here to your investigation tab. And now you have um, the event that you saw. In itself, this doesn't really tell us a lot. So we can go to our actions, add new chart. And we're going to want to look at current for that same time period. And we're also going to want to look at our waveform for that same time period. So now we have our voltage our voltage waveform, our current waveform, and our current RMS plot. So that makes it a little bit easier to get a better idea of what's going on with the event. Um, but once again, you know, this is also zoomed in. We're looking at just, you know, under a, probably a second's worth of data here. So I'm going to hide the waveforms. And then we're going to look at data. We're going to add a second to the beginning and a second to the end. And it still looks good. Let's see what happened a minute before the event. Nothing. And a minute after the event. Nothing. So. Unlike typical power quality meters, you're just going to have the event. You can't do this type of in-depth analysis. What you may have seen was there may have been another event here, or here, or here. And by being able to expand just based off that one event, you can see the entire picture and get a better understanding of, of your system at that time. Okay. So... That is basically understanding your, your power quality tab, your compliance tab, your events. Um, thank you for watching. Be sure to follow us on YouTube, connect with us on LinkedIn, and like us on Facebook. The links to those are in the video description below. Have a great day. Thank you.